So this is how to properly get a battery based system to AC couple and kind of what it'll look like on the displays. So this is a dual radian system and here you can see the battery sampling time I've set. And you can see here that there's no load really showing up. There's just a little bit of, um, there's a DC coupled six kilowatt array and it's putting out like a hundred watts right now. But so basically the, um, the inverter power is just barely matching the, the charged battery here. Um, it's target is 56.8. So it's jumping back back and forth between there to keep it at that spot. And this is with the entire house uh, in backup mode right now. The grid is, you can see right here, the grid is off for this, but it's powering the entire house. So there's the DC coupled side. It's got a 60 kilowatt hour battery. And then we're AC coupling it to an older Sunny Boy 10,000. So this is how you have to communicate with these older ones. And this is some of the settings for it. The FAC Delta minus, Delta plus, uh, the limit Delta and the start delta are all, these are all the important ones that need to be narrowed down from the factory settings. And it's in backup, uh, sorry, it's not in backup mode, it's in uh, adjusted, right? Because I, from the default mode, it's not in off grid. Oops. So we'll go down to show you the values. So what this is doing right now as you can see the frequency at FAC is 60.9 so it's basically throttling this 10,000 inverter down to exactly meet the load which is 847 watts right now for this home uh, with it's just got a a few things on inside which is the best time to to figure this out because you want the lowest load because that is the hardest time to get the inverter to throttle um, so that it doesn't trip off because what we're doing right now is we're throttling the inverter to just barely meet the load so it doesn't trip off and seesaw back and forth of charging and then discharging. So right now the load is 990 watts and you can see over here that it's putting out nothing it's just all it is is for it formed the grid and the grid tie inverter is doing all of the work so these two inverters are doing nothing right now until the load increases too fast for the grid tie inverter to, to react to it because what this will do is it these inverters will shift the frequency to tell the grid tie inverter over there to pick up the load and it happens pretty quick um, but like if a older air conditioner turned on or something, you know, these would these would pick up the slack. But he's got a, a variable speed AC, so that's why it's running right now. And it's I think it only it's probably pulling maybe seven or eight hundred watts right now. That's at about a thousand. Right, so this is basically what a when you properly change the settings on an AC coupled system, this is basically what it'll look like. The grid tie inverter will do all the work with the batteries charged. And then as the batteries become discharged, the frequency will step down right here and it'll turn this inverter up. And earlier we had this thing pumping out 10 kilowatts. Um, so right now, this is the existing main panel. Almost everything's out of it. And I've got a generator interlock, which is being fed by this panel right here, which is the backup panel. And so this is most of the house right here. 
and then there's a couple car chargers and the water heater and the range in this panel. So this is a, I can't remember what he said this was, I think it's a 13 kilowatt array on this inverter, it might have been a 15 kilowatt array on this 10,000, and then it's got a 5 or a 6 kilowatt array on these two charge controllers, and they're basically doing nothing because I got them, got them set just a hair lower than the target voltage for these inverters, that way the grid tie inverter does all the work. And what we did here is just aggregated the from the grid to both of these inverters and then this 100 amp goes down to this transfer switch which just lets us bypass these inverters for service and if there's an issue. And then this backup loads panel here is just aggregating the output of these two radians into this panel and then sends it to the transfer switch which then goes to the panel next to the main existing existing main panel and this is just a thousand amp battery combiner for combining these two inverters and uh, all the batteries and we're still waiting on another new hub so that we can hook up the battery monitor this one we replaced a older outback system here with this so that's it in a nutshell what a frequency shift ac coupled system should look like when it's operating <laughs>